Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guest today is Mikkel Thorup. Let's talk about something a little different today. Welcome to the show, Mikkel. Alicia, happy to be here. Happy to uh, have this conversation and hopefully inspire and uh, educate your audience. But uh, amazing work, amazing podcast, and, and I'm very happy to be here. Let's talk about your amazing business. Love what you're doing. Um, I think some people are really going to enjoy this episode, even if it is not something that they have maybe considered yet. So let's start by talking about your business. Sure. Um, I mean, for my business, you can kind of think of it as the the practical side of, of freedom or liberty, let's say. You know, I don't deal with the theoretical aspect of, of these types of things. What I'm looking for are real life solutions, um, actionable things that people can put in their life to have more freedom. Now, in 23 years of traveling the world and visiting more than 100 countries, what I have seen works better than anything else is the offshore markets and being an expat. So what does this mean? Well, my business, what we do is we're helping to relocate high net worth individuals to other countries. So we can do this for tax reasons, for, for freedom and liberty um, reasons, like I said before, but also just for a bit of fun and adventure. You know, a lot of my people are, are done with the status quo. They're done with what's happening back in Canada or the United States. They want to get back to a simpler life, you know, something a little bit more family orientated. And, uh, and that's what we do. We help them with this move. Now, I don't deal with, you know, putting things in a shipping container and the relocation of physical stuff. I deal more with the esoteric type of things. So it's the taxation, it's the immigration, it's the legal, it's the business structuring. These pieces of the puzzle that that need to be done. Um, you know, I've got a lot of experience with this. We've been doing this for a long time. And uh, the result has been fantastic. It's really transformational people's lives. And it's just so amazing to to watch um, how these people come to me and they might have a lot of stress and anxiety about what's happening in the world. And they come to me and their shoulders are all clenched up. And, you know, after a couple of calls or a couple of weeks or months of working together, their shoulders kind of drop and they, their tone gets a lot more secure and, and a lot slower. And they're just really happy, um, and more relaxed with everything because they've got a solid plan in place and uh, going through this. So yeah, it's amazing work. I, I really do love it. And, and I know that kind of is very broad, but we can go in any direction you like and we can get into the nitty gritty or we can get into some of the other reasons why, but um, up to you. Well, let's go into some of the, the why and the how, because it's not uncommon for people to say, oh, I'd love to move to wherever whether it is for a warmer climate or a slower pace or, um, you know, amazing views or just simply someplace that they've always sort of felt themselves pulled towards. And for a lot of people, and, and I'm the type of person, my family and I, we've picked up, we've moved around the country from coast to coast multiple times. A lot of people are like, I cannot even fathom, like, how do you even do that? They're so um, stuck in this mindset that they have to stay right where they up, they're at, especially if they have an established business. But now that's not necessarily the case. So that's where you come in. And that's what I love to talk a little bit about is what is the reality here? Is it possible for the... The, the individual who has that dream to make that a reality. Well, first off, I mean, people have to understand we are not a turnip. We're not a carrot. We're not like rooted in the place. I'm not a tree. I'm not a plant. I'm not rooted in one spot. We actually have the ability to move anywhere. And in today's day and age, it is actually very simple. Um, you know, there we have more uh, options available to us now than in any other time in history. And I'm I'm very much against the lockdowns and COVID and all of these types of government procedures that have happened over the last couple of years. The only good thing that I can say about it is so many people realize that they can run their businesses remote, they can work remote, they can have remote employees, and the technology that goes along with all of these types of things has been growing drastically. You know, we we did 15, 20 years of technology in two years, you know. So there are just so many options available for people now 
now who want to get out there in the world and to start exploring, you know, and, and live in another country. And you listed some fantastic reasons why, you know, I'm from Southwestern Ontario. Okay. We're in the middle of the great lakes, probably back home right now. There's three feet of snow on the ground. Like I want nothing to do with that whatsoever. I'm in Panama city, Panama. I mean, my house is right by the ocean here. I'm overlooking the Panama Canal. We see the ships going by. It's hot every day. We get sunshine every day. We eat organic fruits and vegetables. I got loads of friends here learning a new language. It's exciting, you know? I mean, it's really an amazing opportunity to explore the world and see new cultures and things. And then when you get to do it with a spouse or with kids and you get to meet all these new people and you're, you watch your kids interact with people from other countries, I mean, it's just so rewarding. There's just so much to be said for it, you know? So I think that people really realize this, you know, especially over the last couple of years as there were lockdowns and people were locked in their home. It's like, I've got one life to live. Like I always dreamed of living in Panama or Costa Rica or Mexico or, or in Europe or something like that. Like, what are you guys waiting for? Like, this is your time. This is the opportunity to get at it right now and to get out there in the world and explore. It, it feels exciting and it feels liberating. And as somebody who has uprooted, it can be a little bit scary sometimes. It can involve some work and certainly moving to another country is going to require a fair amount of legality type of stuff. So let's talk about some of that because sometimes people will shy away from something that their heart is calling them to do because they have these unknowns, all of these overwhelming unknowns. And when they begin to see, oh, wait, these are actually attainable things. Now they open up to that, that new possibility. Well, I think that add on to what you're saying is once you start to realize that other people are doing it, you see that there are a community of people out there who are going through this. These are real people, real business owners, you know, going out there and making a change in their life. This is not, you know, just a pie in the sky dream. This is happening every single day. I run a seven figure business helping people to do exactly these types of things. So once you realize that it is possible, now it's just the practicality of, okay, how is it done? You know, how is, what is the best way, the most effective way, the most efficient way to do these types of things? Because I can tell you with lot with many years of experience, these are not things that you want to make a mistake on, you know, lots of times with business or, you know, in our lives, it's okay to trial and error these things. Now, when we're dealing with complex tax issues and immigration issues, you probably want a bit of help. This is not something you want to DIY it and, and, you know, just try it out yourself. Like I've been there, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Let me make the mistakes for you. <laughs> I don't like I'm the guinea pig, okay? Um, but we have a full-time research firm. I've got full-time lawyers who work for me. Um, you know, we're a team of going on, I mean, over 20 full-time employees who work for me now. Um, and we take people through every step of this. But to kind of go back to your original point, I guess that it, what it really comes down to is trying to, I don't know, search, I don't know, soul search, I suppose, you know, because I think that most people, whether they've communicated it with someone else or not. They have a place in their heart that they really want to try living in or visiting or spending an, exp uh, um, an extended amount of time there. You know, like, oh, I've always dreamed of living in Spain and in Barcelona. Or I've always dreamed about living in Costa Rica on the beach and having a little um, retreat there or something. Like, I don't know what that dream is for you, but I would get, I would bet that most people have this type of a dream, you know? And then it just starts down to, okay, start reading about these things, researching it, join communities. You know, we've got a Facebook group with almost 10,000 people on it. It's um, at expatmoneyforum.com. It redirects you over there. There you can meet lots of other people who are going through this at the same time. You come and listen to my podcast, The Expat Money Show. We've been going for almost seven years now, 230 episodes on the program. And every week we're talking about new countries and new destinations and talking to real business owners who are out there in the world growing something and building something successfully outside of Canada and the US. I mean, that's amazing. Like that is just so 
fantastic and so cool to be a part of and to to help lead people through these things. Um, but yeah, it will always start with that initial interest or desire to make a change in your life. And then we kind of figure out everything from that point. Does that make sense? It does. I love it. So for anyone listening who has had that little twinge of, of, um, enthusiasm about potentially making the move, you're the go-to guy. Now I want to shift gears just a tiny little bit because as the CEO of your business, I would love to get into some of your own mindset related stuff because you have grown a very, very successful company. And that's not something that everyone can, can say. So are you willing to share with us perhaps one mindset challenge that you personally had to overcome in order to get to where you are today? Sure. Um, you know, usually when I get interviewed, people are asking me about my backstory. You know, they they kind of know what happened. I, I mean, I've probably been interviewed about 200 times. I, mean, I won't go through the whole story because you guys can go out there and find it. But basically, uh, in a nutshell, I dropped out of school when I was 12 years old and um, and started traveling internationally as a teenager. Um, I was diagnosed with a learning disability when I was a child. I'm, a, I'm dyslexic, which we now know in today's day and age is not a big deal. But 1980s, apparently, it very much was a big deal. So they pulled me out of my neighborhood school and... Um, I ended up dro dropping out and leaving school at a very young age. And um, it was very challenging because, you know, I was kind of brought up to think that something was not right in my brain. It didn't, it didn't work the same way that other people's brains work. So when I started to really take responsibility for myself and my own education, um, I just had to look at the way that I learned things. And the way that I learn, I, I believe is very different than a lot of other people. Um, I'm very much an audio processing type of person, hence why I have a podcast and, and why we're talking today. Um, I have become a voracious reader, which was not an easy task for me by any means. But um, I have legitimately read well over 2000 books now in my life. I average over 100 books a year and have done for more than 20 years. Um, I really had to take self-education seriously because I wanted to um, be able to provide for my family, for my wife and my kids. And, um, you know, I, I am very much against this victim mentality that we have in the world. I think it is an absolute cancer and it makes me sick. And I never want to um, come across to anyone like a victim. Like I am a, strong, confident man. You know, I'm, I know who I am. I know what I've built. I know what I have done in my life. And that self-confidence comes from, um, actions and, and, and doing things in my life, doing difficult things on a daily basis. That does not come from poor me. Woe is me. Um, give me free stuff. Give, you know, coddle me type of mentality. Like everything that I have, I had to build with my own hands, you know? So I think that, um, you know, my roundabout point here is, is personal responsibility. I think that that is, should always be number one. I think it should always be at the forefront of everything that you do. Uh, you know, especially as a business owner, the buck stops with me, you know, as, as I'm sure the, bu the buck stops with you in your business, you know, um, you can't just blame it away on other people if something goes wrong. Well, we see it all the time with successful individuals. They take 100% responsibility, including when they do something stupid. <laughs> and none of us are perfect. But if you are willing to accept responsibility, if you're willing to learn from your mistakes, if you're willing to do what you need to do to improve in the areas that you need to improve in. And you're right. I mean, how many, how many successful people do you ever hear whining, complaining, or playing the victim card? You just simply do not. But a lot of people didn't necessarily come out of the womb that way. A lot of people had to outgrow 
that sort of childish mindset. It is something that is very, very common human beings to feel like something's not fair. They're not treated right. I should, you know, there's all of these reasons why we could easily say it's someone else's fault. It's the government's fault. Things should be different. I don't have enough control over, over these circumstances. I'm just a, you know, a victim of these circumstances, but that mindset is never going to get you to the next level. So When you were young, you obviously had a pretty good excuse, right? I'm dyslexic. They basically just kicked me right out. You know, they gave up on me, but you didn't let that stop you. Now, I'm curious, though, for people listening, I'd love to hear from you. I'd imagine that there still were times where you had to encounter some of those self-imposed limiting beliefs that you had adopted at those earlier ages in your life. Because I think it's important for people to recognize that you do have to sometimes do some of that inner work. I think that it is important that you do the inner work. Absolutely. I would never claim otherwise. And I, I wouldn't claim that I have not worked on myself or, you know, that I just snapped my fingers and everything was fine. I mean, I definitely went through periods in my life where I I didn't understand. I, I blamed myself for a lot of types of things. But as I grew older, I learned to forgive myself and forgive those around me and understand that, um, you know, if I wanted to have something in my life, if I wanted to have a successful business and marriage and relationships in general and children and my health and pretty much anything that you could possibly think of, I had to be the one to make it happen. You know, it wasn't it wasn't something that was going to be done for me. You know, um, I came from a very loving family, but I didn't come from a wealthy family. You know, I did not have a silver spoon in my mouth growing up at all. (laughs) I mean, very very far from that. Um, So I had to work from a very young age and provide for myself and everything that I wanted, I I needed to go out there and create. I also think that I was fortunate. I I mean, not lucky. Lucky lucky denotes that um, you did not have anything to do with it. You know, it was a magic rainbow or a four leaf clover or a genie's wish and you you rubbed a lamp or something like that. Not lucky, but fortunate uh, to find traveling at a very, very young age and something that really spoke to me and um, and that I had an immense amount of passion for and could really throw myself into. And um, when I started moving overseas, I, I was 17 years old, um, I started to meet all these incredible human beings and they were living their lives so very different than I had ever seen in Southwestern Ontario. They were really creating their lives, you know, um, from scratch. And I just thought that this is so brilliant. And these were the type of people I wanted to be around. These were, you know, my peeps. And I just never got tired of it. You know, I just never got bored of it or sick of it. I never, you know, how many times people have said, oh, this is nice now, Mikhail, but you know, when you want to get married and, and have a career and have kids, you're going to have to come home and settle down. No, screw that. I am never settling. I'm not settling for anything in my life. Um, you know, I met my wife overseas, you know, so I'm Canadian with Danish heritage. My wife is from mainland China. I met her in Germany. We got married in Africa. Our daughter was born in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. Our son was born in Brazil. Uh, we live in Panama City, Panama right now, um, and we're, you know, we're traveling and exploring the world every month, every every day, every week. You know, we're doing something together. So I've not had to settle on any of these types of things. So I am fortunate, but I, I'm I'm not necessarily what I would consider lucky. There is so much gold in what you just shared because you weaved in there, maybe unknowingly, so many of the core traits of successful people. Even the the statement about being fortunate to find traveling at such a young age, I've found, and I've been working with many very successful business owners for well over a decade now, the 
the interesting thing is that the most fulfilled individuals, even though, yeah, they're still cleaning up some of their, some of their challenges, God knows we've all got them right. But they sort of, like you said, right. You kind of, kind of stumble onto it. I mean, that's how it was for me too. Uh, as a young, a very young person, I was kind of being introduced to the very things that later in life would become what I love doing in my business. And I have a feeling there are a lot of people listening who can see a correlation between things that just kind of became introduced to them in like these little ways early on in life and then like built up some real momentum but there was always that that feeling from the very beginning of oh I'm this is really interested interesting you know I'm really passionate about this and for people who are trying to create a business purely from a financial perspective and they don't actually have any interest any passion it's like they're just sort of going through the motions from this kind of superficial place um that's so unfulfilling. I mean, unless you literally, your your thing is just building and growing businesses, in which case then that's different because technically then you are in alignment with your passion and your purpose. But for those people who are somewhat where they want to be, maybe they love their business, but maybe they don't love where they are, right? That's where you're kind of helping to bridge that gap in terms of, you don't have to settle. You you can travel the world. You can live someplace else. You can do what your heart desires. And that's something I've been preaching on this podcast since the beginning, usually in respect to the business side of things. If you have a desire in your heart, damn it, make it happen. <laughs> that's a That's a legitimate desire and you can do it. But it's so much more than that because it is also the family and it is also where you live. It's all of it. You know, we're not just living to work. We're not just living for the the revenue that we generate in our businesses. Well, I can give you a couple of examples. So, I, you know, I, I, without a, naming any names, I can tell you a couple of stories about private clients of mine. So I, I have a, um, a very near and dear uh, couple who I've been working with for a couple of years now. And they're not very old. I think maybe he's 55 and she's a couple of years younger. Um, you know, did well, a few million dollars in in the bank and in some investments. Uh, we ended up selling their primary residency and, you know, they had a, a decent amount of cash. And they said to me, listen, we love to travel. We have no kids. We want to explore the world. So now they they went on a cruise they liked the cruise so much. They bought, I think, two or three months or two or three more cruises. So they're spending two, two, three months uh, on a cruise ship. They're waiting for their house to be built here in Panama. They're going to be spending time between Panama. And I took them down to, to Uruguay on a trip with me. They loved it down there. So they're doing their residency there. And then they're going to be spending time in Europe. So they'll be spending time in Central America and the Caribbean. Um, down in Uruguay, eating fantastic meat, um, you know, all organic beef and and sp spending time down there. And then in Portugal and Spain and Greece and places like this in, in Europe. And I mean, they're 55 and we've budgeted things out. And now he works a couple of hours a week as a consultant for the company that he used to work for and is billing 10 times more than his salary was before. And that's it. That's, you know, she's now retired. And it's just like, that's amazing. You know, they went from, okay, um, employees and, and small business owners in the United States kind of doing the nine to five thing. And within six months, a year of working with me, we've completely transformed their life. We built it exactly as they wanted and everything's falling into place. And we did it legally. We did it compliantly. We did it tax efficiently. Um, they have friends and community. They actually invited me out for a dinner, me and my wife um, out for a dinner a couple of months ago. And they had like 20 friends there and I didn't even know half of them. And I brought them into the country. So now they're introducing me to people like that's so awesome. You know, that's like, that's really fantastic. And I, you know, I have probably a hundred other stories just like that of people who are creating the real lives overseas 
and and working through everything piece by piece. And it can actually happen. Like this is not a pie in the sky dream, like we were saying before. This is real people doing real things. Um, yeah, I just think it's awesome. I love it. All right. Well, I know we are running low on time. So I want to make sure that our listeners know how they can connect with you. So can you share your website and anywhere else you want to direct people to? Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys go to expatmoney.com, expatmoney.com, you will see the full list of services there. You can work with me if you need a little bit of one-on-one help. If you just want to dip your toe in the water and just kind of start to understand a few things, you know, see what's going on, what the possibilities are out there. Uh, we have a free email newsletter you guys can join. I think we're up to about 40,000 people on that. So it's quite popular. We run a weekly podcast, monthly blogs, or sorry, monthly webinars, pretty much daily blog articles. We've got the Facebook group. Um, we're in a lot of different places. So if you go to expatmoney.com, that's probably the best place to start. And then from there, you can kind of go in any direction that speaks to you. But, but very happy to to help your audience and answer any questions that they might have. Okay, Alicia? Awesome. This has been a very fun conversation. I would actually have enjoyed hearing more of your, your stories. <laughs> but I'm sure if people follow you, they're going to be able to hear more and begin to go down their own little rabbit hole, so to speak, and start exploring what's really possible for them. So thank you so much, Mikkel, for being on the show with us. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you to all of our listeners. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.